So one of the uh, main kinds of models that uh, um, analysts uh, will use structural equation models for uh, are for mediation kinds of models. Um, one can estimate mediation models in, in other uh, modeling frameworks, but uh, SEMs are particularly well suited uh, to mediation models. Um, what we are talking about really here is, is the, the, the focus, a focus on not simply the, the direct effect of one variable on another, which is what we are implicitly focusing on and, and often explicitly focusing on in a, an OLS context, but we want to decompose uh, the, 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 the effects of one variable on another into those direct effects, but also effects that are running through uh, other variables uh, in the system. So um, we are going to be interested in the indirect as well as the, uh, the, the, the direct and the total effects. Um, and this is because oftentimes what we are interested in is understanding causal mechanisms, not just whether two variables are causally related, but how they are causally related. So we might, for example, um, conclude that um, a, a get gaining a degree at university increases your earnings. It might have a, a causal effect on, on, on your earnings in later life. Um, and that's a, uh, a, a useful and interesting uh, conclusion to be able to draw. But there might be secondary questions about how that actually happens. What is the mechanism that underlies um, the, uh, the, the earnings return to gaining a, a degree? Um, from a sort of uh, a human capital perspective, uh, we might expect this to be through increasing the individual's skill level or their productivity, which would then, um, from economic theory, um, uh, lead us to expect them to have higher earnings. On the other hand, from a more kind of sociological perspective, it might just be that the, the degree is, a, is just a credential um, and that the, the, it hasn't really endowed the individual with any greater skill uh, or productivity, but it's just given them a, a, a certificate which enables them to get to the, the top of the queue uh, ahead of people who don't have that degree. And those kinds of um, mechanism questions are often uh, very important for policy uh, and are, are at the heart of what we're uh, doing when we're fitting mediation models. We've seen a, a couple of examples of path diagrams with uh, mediation uh, already. Um, here we see uh, an, a, an example where we have ETA2, a latent variable, which is regressed on ETA1, and we have um, a third variable Z, uh, which is our kind of exogenous variable here. Um, and we can look at the, the, the different effects that X has on uh, ETA2. Um, first of all, the, the direct effects of Z on ETA2 is the uh, beta weight beta 3 here, the, the, the direct path. So that's what we would uh, normally be uh, focusing on in a, in a regression equation, uh, that direct effect. Um, but we can also estimate the indirect effect here because we've got the um, beta 1 coefficient of eta 1 on, on Z and the beta 2 uh, coefficient of uh, eta 2 on eta 1. Now if we take the product of those uh, two uh, parameter parameters, then that will give us the indirect effect uh, of Z on, on eta 2. So that's how we can um, algebraically recover the, uh, the indirect effect of one variable on the other, is taking the product of the two beta weights. Um, and then we will perhaps be interested in the total effect. Um, and this is the sum of the uh, indirect and the direct effect. So we might, might find, for example, um, that both uh, direct and indirect effects are non-significant, but there is still a, a significant total effect. So we can get different patterns um, of uh, and understandings of an effect of one variable on another by looking at these, these different uh, effect parameters. Um, we sometimes distinguish between um, partial uh, and perfect mediation. Um, so for example, if we fitted a model that just regressed 
at a two on Z, and we found a, a significant um, and, and substantial effect there. Um, then if we add in the uh, ETA1 predictor, if the, uh, the effect of Z now becomes non-significant, but the, the indirect effect is significant, then we would refer to this as perfect mediation. The, the to the, all of the effect of Z on ETA2 flows through uh, ETA1. Where it, there is still a residual effect, i.e. a significant path between Z and ETA2, that would be referred to as uh, partial mediation. Now, as I said, we can um, specify these kinds of models using a series of OLS models, and we can uh, recover the indirect effects by taking the, the product of the, uh, the, 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 the respective uh, direct effects for, to, to get the indirect and total effects. Um, one of the advantages of, of, um, uh, of doing this in a SEM framework using SEM software, however, is that those kind of calculations are done for you uh, and uh, just provided in the output. And additionally, um, there are various ways of, of, of directly calculating uh, the standard errors of those uh, indirect uh, uh, paths. So we can either calculate uh, the, uh, the standard errors for these mediated paths using what's called the, the delta method, a parametric approach, um, which assumes uh, multivariate normality, um, or more commonly now using non-parametric approaches like bootstrapping, resampling from uh, the sample data to, to generate an empirical sampling distribution. And uh, if we do that, of course, we, we need to have the, the raw data rather than the, the covariance matrix. So um, the SEM framework is, is very convenient for doing this kind of modeling. Um, we can have more complex uh, mediated paths that run not just from uh, one variable through another to a third variable, but through several variables. Um, and we can get uh, estimates of those indirect and total effects and their standard errors. Here's an example again using the, uh, the European Social Survey, uh, an actual model here where we are looking at the, uh, the effect of, of, be, uh, of being in a high income group, your, your, your income, on your level of social trust um, and uh, breaking that down into the direct effect of income on uh, social trust through uh, and also the indirect effect uh, through uh, your level of, of happiness or, or, or life satisfaction. And you can see here um, that the, 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 the beta weights on the path diagram there uh, indicate uh, that there are, uh, uh, these are, these are standardized uh, parameter estimates. Um, so you can see that there, are, there is an effect of uh, being high income on, uh, on social trust, and there seems to be an indirect path there um, so we could just take the product of uh, the 0.09 and the 0.35 uh, parameters uh, to get the indirect effect. If we do that, um, we get a, a figure of about 0.32, which uh, if you look at this slide here, you can see uh, this is some output from uh, AMOS software. And you can see there that the, in, in red, um, the indirect effect of the column variable, which is high income, on the row variable, which is social trust, is 0.032, uh, which is uh, the, the product of those two coefficients to give you the, uh, the indirect effect. And you can see that all of the possible uh, path uh, estimates are, are provided there directly in the output. Um, also, in SEM software, um, you will get, as I said, the, uh, the, the standard errors, either through bootstrapping or parametric, uh, estimation uh, and here we see that the the two-tailed p-value for that indirect effect of uh, income on social trust is is significant uh, at the 95% level of confidence so we could uh, reject the null hypothesis that there is no uh, indirect path uh, between income and uh, social trust so that's a very brief look at um, the, the way that we can fit mediation models and what some of the advantages are of doing this within a SEM context. Um, it's important to remember a couple of limitations here. One is that um, in, in this kind of modeling environment, we're, 
really limited to continuous mediating variables. We very difficult to estimate these kinds of models when the mediator, um, when the when the, uh, the, the, the 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 z variable is continuous, and when we have a mix of continuous and categorical variables. Um, it's also really not a framework for um, the the kind of uh, clean causal effect estimates um, that we, we were talking about in the uh, uh, in the previous video on uh, instrumental variables. Really, this is just decomposing covariances. Um, there are other approaches uh, that have a more of a causal uh, estimate focus using the sort of the, the, the potential outcomes framework, and that would be using uh, G computation and so on. Um, we won't be covering those. Uh, in, in this video, but it's important to be aware that there are other frameworks for, for uh, estimating these kinds of mediation models which are uh, a bit more modern and have uh, uh, a more robust uh, causal inference behind them.